Before we start this video, make sure you hit that like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified because YouTube likes to shadow ban certain channels. Yeah. So if you follow this channel for any length of time, you know I spend a lot of time in the great outdoors, out in the wilderness, traveling back and forth across the United States on all dirt roads when humanly possible. And I do that to get video footage of things like this. Things that you just aren't going to see anyplace else. Things that you really have to work at finding. And many times you find yourself completely and utterly alone. But to get photos like this, it's worth it. That's why I make sure that my truck is rigged up to be self-contained. And part of that is my solar system and my 12 volt system. But I couldn't find any place on the internet that showed you how to tie two solar panels together for my particular application. And with a new build, I wanted to double my solar panel surface size. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do exactly that. So if you want to learn how to do this, you're going to want to sit back, you're going to want to relax, and you're most definitely going to want to check this out. So everybody remembers my Land Cruiser, the Green Monster. That truck went through absolute hell and back, and it always got me home, no matter what. But time passes, and a new day breaks, and with that comes a new build, another vehicle that I'm working on. And this new vehicle needed to be set up just like my old vehicle, and that was pretty easy. Because in my old truck, I built a custom set of rear drawers that held my refrigerator, two huge drawers, and it also concealed my auxiliary battery setup. Now, right before I got rid of the Land Cruiser, I had upgraded to 200 amp hour lithium Battleborn batteries. Now, the reason I switched from Rely On to Battleborn was simply because the form factor was better for the 200 amp hour Battleborn batteries. To be perfectly honest, the Rely On battery, in my opinion, was a better setup because the heating element was automatic. You didn't have to wire it like you can see right here and put a switch in. It did it automatically. And now that, that that feature is gone, I really miss it. So there's that. I do prefer the fact that these are made in the United States, obviously. Now back to my setup. I only had a 110 watt solar panel on top of my truck and it was made by a company called Merlin, which in my opinion is the hands down best solar panel you can get for the top of your rooftop tent. These are serious serious solar panels and they sell them pre-cut for every type of rooftop tent camper everything that's out there i got 210 watt panels for my alucab and just put them where i wanted them i didn't get anything specifically made for my truck but fourth d solar i have no affiliation they sell good gear seriously good gear before I did this, I prepped the top of my Alucab tent. I wiped it down with a non-grease formula so that I had a nice, clean, sterile surface to start with. I got out my roller, and then I got my new solar panel from 4th D Solar. The top of the Alucab gives you plenty of surface to mount solar panels. 
but I wanted the most clean wiring possible. And then after the wiring was installed, I needed to protect it because unlike many off-roaders or overlanders, I really go off-road. And solar panel wires are the first thing you rip off beside your WeBoost antenna. Ask me how I know. After figuring out exactly how I wanted to place it and where I wanted to mount it permanently, I made sure my wiring was going to be good to go and I'd be able to twin these two together and protect the wiring. I wanted as little wiring shown or available for trees to rip off as humanly possible. Now one thing about Merlin solar panels that you may love or hate is the bottom comes with a mastic. The entire 100% bottom of this panel has a mastic self-adhesive like on any other roofing project you'd run into. So you peel off these two huge white pieces of paper and it, it shows you the mastic or the adhesive. And this stuff sticks like nobody's business. I've had the other 110 watt Merlin panel on my roof for, I believe, three years. And it's never even sort of come off. Not even a little bit. This stuff is no joke. So when you put it down, make sure the surface is really clean. Make sure it's sunny out because the heat is your friend. And make sure when you place it, it's where you want it. And then I took a, a vinyl uh, flooring roller and rolled it down after I had it in place. Because once it's in place, it is not coming up again, as illustrated right here. And bear in mind, I'm, I'm applying this to a diamond plated surface and this still sticks like nobody's business. Now take the hand roller and roll it down. And once again, I'll leave links if you want to get one of these for yourself because I've used this for a million reasons other than just solar panels. They're good to have. Links will be below. Now here's a look at the panel that's been up there for three years. And that is the Kydex that I made to cover the solar panel wire wires so they didn't get ripped off. And it's held up pretty good. And I'm going to show you how to make one out of Kydex yourself after I'm done wiring these two bad boys together. So I'm going to assume if you're watching this video, you have rudimentary 12 volt wire tools to do things like this. I used a set of Klein wire strippers to peel off the coating off of the solar panel wiring. And then I wired them in parallel. This is what my setup looked like before I added a new panel, and this is what I want it to look like. The positive and the negative, and run positive, positive, negative, negative, just like the diagram shows. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. After figuring out exactly the way I'm gonna route the wires for the new solar panel to the old solar panel, with minimal slack, I don't want anything sticking up. I want it nice and tight to the top of the rooftop tent. So measure twice and cut once. But after I figured out exactly where I wanted them, I cut the positive and then spliced it together with the positive to the existing solar panel using these unbelievably awesome little connectors. These E-Volt heat shrink butt connectors allow you to put two larger wires in one side in one large wire in the other side. So it's not lopsided and it, sh it shrinks up perfectly, absolutely perfectly. And then I still put a heat shrink shield with self-adhesive over it to make it 100% watertight. I'll leave links below for everything. After stripping back the wiring on the existing panel and the new panel, I took the E-Volt splicing connector, the butt connector, but before I did that, I slid a heat shrink over the wire. That way there, I could put it on after the fact, if you follow what I'm saying. And if you don't follow what I'm saying, I'll show you exactly what I just said a couple minutes later in the video. So don't worry about it. I'll show you the exact process.
And this is why the E-Volt butt connectors are so awesome. They allow you to do two large wires into one large wire and they still solder down beautifully. After I heat shrink them, then I crimp them. After it cools down and turns back into a solid, I crimp them, which is obvious. And then you slide on your heat shrink tubing to cover this entire thing, making it completely watertight. And this is what you want it to look like when it's done. Use good heat shrink tubing, the kind with the adhesive inside, and you will be watertight. When you strip the solar wires back, you want to leave about a half inch of solid wire there. And make sure that there's no insulation. You don't want any insulation from the wire coating inside the butt connector. You just want nice, clean wiring. So take your time with this because you don't want to mess with this ever again. And if you do it correctly, you won't have to mess with it ever again. This is going to be on top of your truck, more than likely on top of a black rooftop tent. So it's going to be exposed. So you want to do this right, one and done. So I've been editing this for hours and I'm doing this kind of backwards, but this is what you want to do. You take your heat shrink tube and you slide it over the wire first, the one that's going to your truck, not the two. So you're going to have a Y here. One wire is going to go into two. Then take the E-Volt butt connector and put it on the piece of wire. I twin these two together, but you don't have to, but I do that because it's more secure, in my opinion. Twin these two guys together. Put the E-Volt butt connector on. One side is larger than the other, so just take note of that. Double check. Pop it on. In this particular case, I'm going to crimp it now. And these are strong, so I had to use two hands. So that's crimped. Good to go. Now put the other side in and heat it up, buttercup, and heat it up from all sides. And while this is cooling, hold it flat because it's going to be in a liquid form. You want to hold that flat till it turns back into a solid. And then slide your heat sleeve up over it. And once again, heat it up from all sides. These heat shrinks have adhesive inside so it makes a literal waterproof barrier. These things are now basically bulletproof. So long story short, what I've done is I've split the positive coming from the batteries and I've split the negative and sent one to each one of the panels, just like this shows. I routed the new wiring right down to the existing wiring, spliced in, creating a Y or a T. And then after I was done, I took some Kydex sheets, 12 by 12s that I got from Amazon using some 3M heavy duty tape and a heat gun and I made some shielding and I'll show you how I did that right now. After I figured out how wide I wanted the Kydex sheeting, I wanted to figure out what angles because I wanted this Kydex to bump up over the wiring just a little bit. So this is all going to be personal preference. But once you figure out where you want to bend the Kydex, you simply take your heat torch or your heat gun. Either one will work. You can use an electric heat gun or a butane heat torch. Mark your Kydex and then just run up and down in a straight line where you want to bend it. Don't melt it, don't burn it, just heat it up and it'll become pliable and then you can 
bend it any which way you want. You've got your bends in place. Make sure wherever you're going to mount this, you clean it immaculate. As clean as you can get it. The cleaner, the better. The better the tape will stick. This 3M VHB tape is really strong stuff. I've run it for two years and I never lost the Kydex. And you can tell by the scratches on my rooftop tent and my solar panel, it's been through the ringer. Once, you got the thing, once you've got the Kydex cut to width, you've got your bends where you want them, and you've got your tape applied, simply put them in place and cover up the wire. It was a nice sunny day, so the sun was working with me and the fact that everything I'm working with is black, so it was fairly warm. Put it in place, press it down nicely, get your angles, press that down nicely, and then once again I use the floor roller, but you can use a rolling pin or a can of Bush's baked beans, it doesn't matter, something round. But once it's on there, now your solar wires are protected. And I go through great lengths to make sure my wiring stays as tight as humanly possible to my truck, like using these for instance. 3M zip tie mounts or 3M double sided clips everywhere. And then I have Anderson connections in that trailer visor clip right there so I can disconnect and plug in my solar blanket if I don't want to use the, the solar panels on top. And then I just kill it with zip ties and 3M zip tie mounts absolutely everywhere. And you can't see any of this from the ground. You can only see it because I'm holding the camera up there, obviously. At any rate, all said and done, this is what my entire setup looks like. I have a, a dual battery monitor made by NASA, literally, that does lithium, a BCDC 1250D, two battle borns, 100 amp hours a piece, and a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter by Go, pure, Go Power. And this is all in the back of my rear drawer. So when I have the cover on, you can't even see it. At any rate, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment below, and I will try to return the favor. I am out.